Welcome to the sixth tutorial in the Recoma tutorial series. Today we're going to look at a single algorithm, NMF, which belongs to the objects family of processes. NMF is a shortening of the phrase non-negative matrix factorization, which describes the mathematical process that underpins the algorithm. When we apply this to audio, it is implemented as a spectral process, by which I mean we are decomposing a spectrum with the NMF algorithm. This is often referred to as source separation, where you take a signal that is comprised of multiple mixed elements and try to untease them from each other. NMF is what we would call blind source separation. We can't feed it symbolic information or tagged data to help guide the decomposition process, but we can provide it some parameters that will influence how the process unfolds. Let's take a look at the parameters for NMF and how they can influence the decomposition process. Probably the most important parameter to discuss is named components. When NMF is set off to perform the decomposition process, it is attempting to break down a big matrix of data into some new smaller matrices. Each of these new matrices will be a component of the original sound or a source in the context of source separation. If we specify two components, NMF will give us back two separate extractions that can be summed together to recreate the original. We don't have much control over how it decides what is in these components. That part is quite magical, but we have to assume that the NMF algorithm is trying to find two unique subspectra of the source that have relatively independent morphologies. You might also like to think of each component as a complex filter that has an independent gain control that can vary. Here I'll start by decomposing this sound into two components. It's fairly obvious from a perceptual point of view that there are two instruments in this sound and we can hope that NMF latches onto this. That was pretty good. Now let's try the same process with 12 components. Can you hear how some of the components are very similar to each other? This overdivision of components will happen at some point when the algorithm can't differentiate in a meaningful way any further. When decomposing to many components, it's likely that highly defined individual details reside in a single component, while the other components start to sound similar to each other and we can see an over separation of musical ideas. Selecting the appropriate number of components can be guided by your ear if you aim to extract particular elements of a sound, or you can choose a number of components unrelated to the perceptual qualities to see what might come out of the process. Ultimately, if you want more precise source separation, you need to have more components, but you also need to balance not separating so far that the individual components lose their relationship to the musical whole. NMF is an iterative process that could theoretically go on forever if we didn't stop it. We specify a maximum number of iterations in the core loop of the algorithm so that this doesn't happen.
The caveat of the iterations parameter is that the longer you let the algorithm run, the more defined the components will be at the end of the process. There is a point at which adding more iterations to the process though gives you very little gain in this regard. However, too few iterations can render the process without enough time to figure out how to best decompose to the number of components specified. You also have to balance the computation time too. Adding more iterations means the computer needs to crunch more numbers and for longer. With long files, this can quickly balloon the length of the process. I would imagine that separating this sound into two components would give us a component with the clicks and transients in one separation and the tonal squeak in another. Watch what happens with a very low iteration count though. See how the separation is fairly negligible? At only five iterations, the algorithm hasn't had enough attempts at decomposing the sound. By upping the iterations limit to 200, a much better separation will be achieved. Ultimately, the iterations parameter is about balancing various artistic and technical needs. Are you rapidly prototyping an idea? Do you want maximum separation? Perhaps you want a weak separation of elements. The FFT settings is a parameter that you'll have seen on various algorithms, but until now has largely gone unexplained. If you're not familiar with the FFT process, it's best to use the defaults until you've grasped the basics. For all Flucoma objects, the FFT settings parameter is three numbers that dictate the window size, hop size, and FFT size. Bigger FFT sizes give you more spectral resolution, but increase the computation time for processes that operate on these frames. The hop size will define the spacing between windows of audio samples, so lower numbers give you more temporal resolution, but can cause more leakage between frames as well as adding more frames to the computation process. The FFT size is usually set to the same as the window size, however you can change this if you want to do oversampling for example. When one of these numbers is set to negative 1, it infers the parameter from the window size. For example, an FFT setting of 2048, negative 1, negative 1, translates to 2048, 1024, 2048. For the hop size, it is always half the window, and the FFT size will match the window size. Because everything is offline, you don't have to worry so much about the latency introduced by changing FFT settings, but you have to be wary that they can drastically increase the time taken for a process to finish. Particularly with NMF on long files, using a large FFT size starts to complicate the process and with high iterations it can cause time to extend into unmanageable durations. If you're a guitar player, you've definitely experienced the woes of delay pedals soaking up the sound of the pick rather than the lush harmonic chords you want to extend into infinity. With NMF we can try to isolate the pick sound and only apply processing to the other parts.
using two components and a relatively high number of iterations has separated the pick out onto its own track. Let's apply some delay to the non-pick component. We might also arbitrarily separate out components so that we can process bits of a sound individually. Taking this drum loop, I'll granulate some number of components in isolation from each other. That brings us to the close of this tutorial. I hope you don't feel intimidated by NMF because of how unwieldy it might seem. Applying NMF and getting used to the way it listens is a big part of being able to put it into practice effectively. Once you get to a point where you can maybe predict what it's going to do, it becomes a process in itself of guiding it towards an extraction that you had in mind or reacting to a surprising component that seemingly emerged from nowhere. The next tutorial is the final one, where we'll be looking at how you can develop your own scripts that leverage parts of the Flucoma toolbox using the Riacoma library. I'll show you some of the scripts I've made and give you the knowledge to put this into practice for yourself.